In this video, we'll learn to draw 2D shapes and demonstrate an understanding of line symmetry and knowledge of the relative size of angles. I'll start with the relative size of angles because that's going to help us with the line of symmetry and drawing 2D shapes. So I've got a few angles here. I've got a 90 degree angle, which is the ones that we find in the corners of the papers or corners of the rulers, corners of the room as well. And we can measure them with a protractor as well. So it go up to 90 degrees. This line we call perpendicular line. So it creates 90 degrees if you're interested to know. Now we've got angles which are smaller than 90 degrees like this one, that's 49. So any number of degrees that is lower than 90, maybe 80, 65, 73, 2, 5, any number of degrees, we call this acute. So that's what we call acute angle. A way to remember is like, since it's a small thing, it's like the small things in life, we call them cute. Little babies are cute. Or tiny things that we say, oh, this is cute. So, cute angle. When it's an angle is larger than 90 degrees, um, so it looks like this. So this is 100, it could be 110, 105, 106. Anything that is bigger than 90, but it's smaller than 180, which would be a straight line. Okay, what we call this, obtuse. What we call it is obtuse, obtuse angle. And one way to remember is since it's larger than 90 degrees, is obese. So that's a way to remember it. And we have other angles like these ones, which are larger than 180. And they are reflected on the other side as well. So, reflex, we call them reflex angles. So, reflected, reflex. So, we've looked at these angles and how they compare to the 90 degrees or the right angle as well. Now, we'll actually try and draw 2D shapes. So, we'll start with a square. And we know that a square has equal sides. So we'll make this a square of three centimeter. So three. Now we'll do the next side, but we shouldn't forget that this got to be a right angle here, because otherwise it won't work. We'd end up having a different shape completely. So I will make a right angle here and then measure it to be three centimeters. And I can check whether I've got this as 90 degrees and that is spot on 90 degrees. And I need to do the same with this one as well. So a line in it, 90 degrees is there, so this must be up to that point if we connect the two. So I will go up to three centimeters, and then of course, these two we don't need to measure the angles because we just can connect the dots. But if we want to make sure, just check it and it is 90 degrees so the sides were the same three centimeters all of them and the angles 90 degrees so all of these 90 degrees because what can happen if we don't measure these correctly is that we'll have so let's say i'm trying to do 
three centimeters again and then I'll do three centimeters again and connecting these two together do I have a square now no I don't that has a different name which is called a parallelogram so that is a square angles and the sides are really important now we'll try and draw a rectangle so a rectangle we know it has some longer sides two longer sides so we go let's say five well I extended it a bit so I'm gonna make it six now six and let's make this three but have I actually measured the angle have I done it correctly that is right and I'll measure this as well so that is 90 degrees and six centimeters now again I want this to be 90 degrees as well and it is if I just connect this to ends of the line of the lines so again 90 degrees 90 degrees 90 degrees and this was six centimeters this was three centimeters different lengths so we've done a rectangle as well the square and rectangle and we'll have a look now at drawing a triangle so there are different types of triangles I could do one where I don't care about the angles at all and different sides different sizes of sides So if I extend it a bit more, so the, that's a, a triangle. We have other another type of triangle, which is the right angle triangle. So a right angle suggests that we need to have a right angle. So I will measure 90 degrees connect the points and that is so 90 degrees so that is the right angle triangle this is scaling one and this there are another two types the one where you have two of the same angles two angles which are the same in other words so if I make one 50 degrees, so will be the other one on the other side at the base. So 50, that is 50 as well. So if I just connect the dots, there we have the triangle. But these two are the same. This is what we call an isosceles triangle. And finally, there is this special type of triangle which has all the sides the same and all the angles the same. And it's called equilateral. So equal all sides are equal and in order for them to be equal there must be 60 degrees 60 and 60 and 60 because all together all the angles in a triangle make 180 so i'll go there we have 60 and i'll measure 60 on the other side as well So if I connect these together, I've got a triangle which has 
all of the angles and the sides the same so this side is the same as that and the same as that as well so there are three types of triangles we looked at a square and a rectangle a circle is really important as well so we'll draw a circle as well with a circle you don't need a ruler but you need a compass so the way you start it is through a point a dot and put the pointy part of the compass on it and then just draw the circle like this so that's the center of the circle make sure you don't move this around so the center doesn't change because otherwise it'd have a different shape not a circle so the other two shapes that you need to know are the pentagon and hexagon in order to know how to draw them it's important that you know how many degrees in each angle so i'll link it to what we've already done so with a square we said each and every corner would be 90 degrees so 90 and 90 90 90 makes 360 so all together 360 degrees and the same thing with a rectangle 360 so what we know is that when it comes to these shapes with four sides which we also call quadrilaterals they their angles add up to 360. When it comes to triangles, it only takes up half of it because a, a triangle is like a square or rectangle being cut in half. So all of these add up to 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, no matter what type. So these add up to 180. Obviously, a circle doesn't have any corners. But this will link to what we're going to be doing next because if you recall, a pentagon, a regular pentagon, and that's what we're interested in, looks like this. And it has equal sides and equal angles. So what this is going to mean is that we need to know exactly how many degrees there will be all together and the easy way to work out or to find out is to split this into triangles so start from a point and split this into triangles how many triangles have i created there are three of them so 108 in here 108 in there and 108 in there so each triangle as we said has 180 degrees so 180 plus 180 plus 180 so that's 24 so 4 down and 2 2 3 4 5 so 540 degrees all of these together but we're going to have to split them into 5 because they're 5 angles so 540 divided by 5 how many 5's would fit into 5 that's that's 1 how many 5's would fit into 4 that's none so I put zero. Now into 40, how many fives? That would be eight. So each angle must be 180 degrees. So let's actually draw it. So I'll start off with a line. Easy to do at the bottom. So let's make this three centimeters because there will be equal sides as well. So I need to make now this angle 180. Eight and this 108 so I'll go starting from 0 and measuring 108 so we'll go to 108 that's this point here and on the other side as well for the other angle that's going to be starting from here 100 and
So I've got that already. Now I'll need to measure the sides three centimeters, three centimeters as well. So now I need to measure the next angle here, which needs to be 108 again. So we start from zero, 108. So connect these two. And there we have them and there we go we do the same over here 108 so we go to 108 there now this must be 108 as well so I'll double check um, And that is 108 as well. So I've got a pentagon, a regular pentagon that I've drawn. I will shorten these lines. So I've got a pentagon. This is 108. This is 108. This is 108, 108, 108. So there is my pentagon. And the final one we need to draw is a hexagon. So again, it, the idea of it is exactly the same as for the pentagon. So a pentagon it will have six sides, equal angles, equal sides, so again, to find out how many degrees altogether, we're gonna split this into triangles. So I'll go, there is one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Each of them is 180 degrees because we said in a triangle, that's how many degrees there are. So we'll go, we'll add one more because there were, there were three in a pentagon, there are four in a hexagon so 540 add 180 so that's zero that's two that's seven so 720 degrees all together now 720 degrees that is for all of it so in each of the angles how many degrees will there be so 720 divided by six so how many sixes fit into seven? That's one, one remaining. Sixes into 12 is two, and into zero, that's zero. So 120 degrees each. So again, we'll start with the line. We'll make it three centimeters long, and we'll measure now 120 degrees. So we'll go zero up to 120, and that's there, connecting. And then on the other side, we've got 120 we need. So we go to 120, because we're starting from zero here, 120. Connecting the dots. And again, it's gonna be three centimeters long. So three there and three here. There we go. And 120, so from zero to 120, which is there. So connecting these two as well. So again, three centimeters that's got to stop there 120 again so that's this point here connecting joining three centimeters so it's got to stop here 
now if we just join these two dots together it should be 120 as well yeah so it is 120 and that's 120 so all of these angles measure 120 120 120 120 120 degrees so I've just drawn a regular hexagon so to summarize we had the square and rectangle with 360 degrees in total we had the triangles with 180 a circle which doesn't have any angles at all and we looked at the pentagon we split it into triangles and it added up to 540 degrees so we split that into five equal parts and that suggested that it was 108 degrees each corner and with a hexagon we added them up and it was 720 so we divided that by six to give 120 degrees in each of them and that's how we constructed a pentagon and a hexagon as well now we'll look at the lines of symmetry so the lines of symmetry are based on the angles and the sides as well. So what we've just done should help us with constructing lines of symmetry, accurate lines of symmetry. So if you look at the square, if I cut this halfway through like this, so that is it was 3, I'm going to cut it in half to 1.5, so 1.5 again, connect these together and that's a nice symmetry because both sides reflect each other. And I could do the same thing on the other side, so that's a 3, so there's going to be 1.5, one 1.5, one so this is another line of symmetry. With a square, however, you can have these lines of symmetry as well because this side is reflected on the other side as well and you can have another one like this. So it has three lines of symmetry, four lines of symmetry. What about the rectangle? Does it have four, less or more? Now, again, cutting this in half by measuring accurately we can do this and also on the other side I can do this and you reflect. Can I do this one, this line of symmetry? No I can't because then this corner would come over here and this corner would come over there. So it has a rectangle that has only two lines of symmetry. What about this triangle, the scaling triangle which we said had no equal sides or angles so this has no lines of symmetry at all because none of the sides reflect the other what about this one now if this angle is not the same as that angle then this has no line of symmetry whereas this one here this one has two equal angles which means these two sides are the same. So finding the midpoint here, that's six, so it's going to be a three, connecting it with the other corner, and that's one line of symmetry. What about the equilateral one? So if we look at the equilateral, we said all sides are the same and all angles are the same. So if I cut this in half to two and connect it, with this corner, that's one line of symmetry, it's reflected. But the same thing would happen over here if I cut this in half and connect it with this, so that is reflected as well. And the same thing would happen on the other side, so we'd have cut this in half, connect, and so that equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry and if we look at the pentagon 
Again, equal sides and angles, so halfway through, that's 1.5, connected with the angle on the opposite, and that is what you get, a line of symmetry, another line of symmetry here, another line of symmetry, and we can have one more here, and one here. So how many lines of symmetry do I have? It's five. Five sides, five equal sides, five equal angles, five lines of symmetry. And as you would expect, we'd have many lines of symmetry here. So first of all, if you cut this at this point, we'd have a line of symmetry because it's reflected both sides. And if I do it here as well, that would be two, that would be three. Now I can cut this in half by measuring both sides to be precise. So there we have another one and I can do that here and there. So there we go. So we have six lines of symmetry in a hexagon. So this should show you how many lines of symmetry. What about a circle? How many lines of symmetry does a circle have? If I cut this through this point, I'd cut the circle in half. If I did it here, I'd cut the circle in half again. If I did it here, I'd cut the circle in half. If I did it here, I'd still cut the circle in half. So, so this means that a circle has many lines of symmetry. It has many lines of symmetry. So a circle has an infinite number of lines of symmetry.